Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Kendall, and I am going to go over fountain pen knockoffs, copies, things like that. Um, I thought I would try this camera on my laptop, and a little bit later, I will flip the camera so I can share uh, I can share a, a spreadsheet and some resources with you as well. Um, so um, let's dive into some pens that I have that are knockoffs. I've already reviewed two, and I will likely review more, but um, I thought it could be fun just to show all of them in, in one video. Okay, uh, here are nine pens from my collection that are Chinese knockoffs of more expensive pens. Uh, I thought it'd be good to have something nice to look at visually as I kind of go over some of the, the issues with knockoffs, maybe some pros versus cons. Um, just terms to use. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about is just the the idea of a forgery. Uh, that's very different than what we're talking about here. And that is trying to pass off a pen as the more expensive pen uh, using its name or its symbols. So obviously that's uh, illegal. It's not right. And that's not what I'm talking about today. But, um, you know, you could use the term knockoff, you can use the term clone or copy, uh, but that's what these are. Uh, They're not trying to pass themselves off as anything different. However, uh, there is an issue that I think is deceptive. Although it doesn't fool many people, sometimes a cheap Chinese pen will have 14K on the nib. And I don't know that that fools many people, but it is annoying and it's, uh, yeah, more than anything, it's annoying. Are there other things that are deceptive? Uh, if you can think of things like that, uh, please leave those in the comments. I think that'd be good to have uh, in mind. Um, obviously for a pen to be copied, it means it's a successful design. So I think a pen can, can wear that as a, a badge of honor uh, for that brand. So they're obviously good designs. What other benefits are there to, to having a knockoff? Uh, well, the obvious one is cost. And I'll go through these one, one by one, just kind of a quick overview of, you know, what I paid versus what the official pen usually would go for. But lower prices allow people to try things they normally wouldn't be able to. Um, it can attract more people into the hobby, which I think is generally a good thing. Uh, and I think there is an element, uh, especially as Chinese pens have gotten better in their quality, that I think that can add some pressure to a larger company like Pilot or Sailor just to try to up their game and do a better job of, of what they're doing. Um, not that they aren't doing great, but perhaps slowing their prices. Just that idea of competition, creating better products. Um, some of the downsides, knockoffs, I think they can create a race to the bottom, especially uh, if, if it's just price they're trying to cut down, uh, you can get low cost companies just creating lower cost, lower cost uh, at the sacrifice of the product. Uh, and nobody wins in that case. Um, also, you've got a company that's taking advantage of another company. Uh, they're using a design uh, that they didn't come up with and it can feel like cheating. And a company can be, you know, taking a big gamble if there are patents, trademarks, etc., uh, that are legally enforceable. So, uh, and then another thing I thought of is that if the copy uh, has a really poor quality, it can drive people away from the hobby that would otherwise want to be uh, enjoying fountain pens. Uh, so. Um, I have reviewed these two pens in detail, these left two, uh, and I plan to probably review most, if not all of these at some point. 
Uh, but I want to give a quick overview of these pens left to right. Uh, so we have the uh, Majon uh, Moonman X1. It's a copy of the Mont Blanc Bohem. And I paid $40 for this, thereabouts. And oops, I cross threaded this pen. There we go. Um, so it does have the, the cool factor there. Uh, I go into a lot of details on the review for this uh, in my other video. Um, but the Bohem is a rare pen, and there's a lot of versions. Uh, you could be paying anywhere from 300 to 800 just depending on the version you get. Uh, so that's what this pen is. Uh, next in line is the Wingsung 699. This is a copy of the Pilot Custom 823. Uh, I paid $30 for this pen and it is uh, it goes for about $330 for the, the pilot. Uh, this is a vacuum filler, uh, and I do have a lot more details on this pen in the review. Uh, next, this is the Majon slash Moonman A1, and it's a copy of the very famous uh, pilot vanishing point. It has the, the knock here with the retractable nib, uh, which is very rare for fountain pens, so very cool, tried and true design, um, uh, very good pen. A lot of people have reviewed this knockoff and it's quite good. Um, I paid about 40 and the vanishing point, it's about $170. So quite a difference there. All right, next in line, this is the Majon uh, slash Moonman M800, uh, and it is a copy of the Leonardo Memento. Uh, I paid about $30 for this one, and the Leonardos typically go for about $230. Okay, this here is a very famous pen. You probably recognize. Uh, it is the Jinhao X159. And it is uh, very similar to a Mont Blanc 149. Um, I got this one for about $10. And the Mont Blanc can go for, you know, roughly seven to $800. Okay. Um, this one is a cool looking pen. It's got this nice overlay. It's uh, this is an Asvine. V169, and it's mimicking the design of a Laban skeleton. Um, I paid $38 for this pen. Uh, those Labans typically are around $200. Um, and I should point out, a lot of the higher end pens do come with gold nibs, but not always. And uh, even if you upgrade one of these pens to a gold nib, you're still going to be far, uh, far more inexpensive than the official pen. So there's there's more to it than just the gold nib. Uh, this is the Jinhao 100 Centennial, and it is uh, very similar to a Parker Dual Fold Centennial. Um, I quite like this resin here. Uh, one of the downsides with Chinese pens, they don't typically have names for uh, the resins. So um, Fire Opal is what uh, somebody online mentioned, and I, I quite like that. Uh, Jinhao 100, these, uh, this one was about 15, um, but those Parker Dual Folds are uh, roughly 600. All right. This little chonky boy um, is a really fun design. 
This is the Moon Man slash Majon Q1, and it's a copy of a Tombow. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I believe it's a Zoom or a Dragonfly, but this pen cost me $20. Uh, those Tombow pens are 200 or more. They're actually discontinued. They're hard to find, just very rare. So I'm, I'm really glad I've got this in my collection. Uh, and this will definitely get a review at some point. Okay, and then last on this list is the Jinhao 80. Uh, the exterior does look a lot like a Flamme 2000. Uh, but you open it up and the section and the nib, um, it's, it's more, of a, more similar to a Lamy Ion. Uh, the fact it's also a cartridge converter versus a piston. Um, there have been a lot of really good reviews on this pen already. Now, I did take the original nib out and I replaced it with the Lamy uh, 1.1 stub, which I've really enjoyed. Uh, picked it up from Goulet. Very tricky to replace the nib. Um, and I, I think that's worth its own review and others have done that too. Uh, but this pen, besides the nib, that's different. Um, and the nib that came with it is okay. Um, but I was looking for something a little better. Uh, but the pen itself, as it came, was about $5. And Lamy 2000s uh, run about 180 So for totals, uh, all of these pens cost me about $230 versus roughly 3,000 if they were the legit originals. So it's, it's definitely a, a good example of, of just the, the difference in price is so dramatic. Uh, so uh, basically a difference of $2,770. Uh, I'm not arguing that these are um, I'm not arguing that the legit pens are not worth it. I'm just wanted a good overview. And, and the striking, the biggest factor is the price difference for sure. Okay, uh, before I jump into sharing my computer screen, I wanted to say, please hit the like button if you find this, uh, if you found this helpful or interesting uh, and uh, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on, on new content. Um, I've got a lot of things in mind that I don't think have been covered by other fountain pen related videos. Uh, and if you think of something that you'd like me to cover, then let me know. Uh, thanks in advance for your comments. I very much appreciate your input and your questions. Um, but uh, let me know, did I miss something uh, in my topic here uh, as far as knockoffs? Let me know in the comments. As I was talking about imitations and knockoffs, uh, these are generally Chinese pens, and there are a lot. <clears throat> so uh, as soon as I was looking into this, uh, I asked around and I was referenced to um, part of the Reddit for fountain pens. If you go to that page and you scroll down on the right side, you'll see useful information. And there is a guide to Chinese fountain pens. Um, but if you click on that, it's, um, it's this link here. It's uh, from 2019. Um, this uh, user, uh, Ujobex, I believe, uh, updated that in 2021. And I think they're planning to update this every couple of years. So uh, anyway, I will link in the show notes the, the, the link to this updated guide. It comes in a part one and a part two. Uh, and it basically it goes down through the various, um, I mean, these are organized by filling method. And so all the piston fillers, and it will say which model. And uh, this is just all the Chinese pens. A lot of them are knockoffs, but not all. And so 
it will tell you a little bit more if it's if it is a knockoff or if it's similar to something else. There's a lot of detail here, so it's very useful. Um, but it's also a little bit like drinking out of a fire hose. So um, for myself, I tried to create more of a, a spreadsheet form of this, and I will share that in the show notes as well. So I've got the spreadsheet up. I've titled it Fountain Pen Imitations. That's not really the best title because these are also just Chinese pens. Not all are knockoffs, but I was kind of focusing on the knockoffs and I wanted a, a reference guide for all of those. So I've got it so that you can sort it by brand. Um, I guess you can sort it by filling mechanism as well. So if there is, you know, in this case, uh, this top one, the Asvine V169, is an imitation of the Laban skeleton, and it is a vacuum filler. And I can also add more detail to describe it here. Um, so that being said, I, I plan to share this, and I'm thinking I can turn this in a way that I can allow edits or comments. So if if uh, people want to pitch in, uh, they can strengthen this, make it better. Uh, I am not claiming that this is perfect by any means. There's probably mistakes, and then there's definitely stuff missing. But yeah, this I think could be very useful for the fountain pen community. So I'm going to try to share this uh, wide with everybody. Okay, and that is it for this video. Uh, please comment down below if I miss something. Uh, also, tell me what you think about my uh, spreadsheet that I want to share. Uh, and please share that far and wide. I'd like it to be as accurate and up-to-date as possible. And that is it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.